I'm sorry, I have to continue my Steve Kennedy story because a call was coming in. That's why you saw me reach for the top. And by reaching for the top to get rid of the call, it made my podcast <laughs> stop. So this is part two of part one, if that makes any sense. And nothing in my life makes sense. But anyway, as Steve Kennedy and I are in this area where there's a ravine like this, and it's about 10 foot wide, and there's no way to go back to where the guy still was driving his truck, figuring out how to kill us, and getting to safety on the other side of this type of a ravine. We walked along because there was water in there. It was like a creek. So we decide there's no way. It's too far to jump. So Steve and I decide, well, listen, the guy's making more fun. Steve was making more fun of the guy. So if the guy does happen to come walking for us and sneak up on us, he's going to want to kick one of our asses or both. So Steve decides he's going to jump first. And I almost pushed him out of the way to to jump first. There was a little branch, there was another piece of wood, and the water trickled down to about a two inch wide thing with sand on both sides. We figured, okay, this is dry land. So Steve says, I'm going to jump, and he pushes me to the side, and he decides to jump, and he hits that perfect piece of wood and that little bit of a log there, and he sinks up to his waist in muck. It was like quicksand. And I'm looking at him like, oh my God, and he's facing that way, and I'm behind him, and he's turning around, and since we were just basically teenagers, our voices were still kind of up and down when you screamed, so he went from, help me, help me, <laughs> it was crazy, I laughed so hard that basically I was falling on the floor, on my knees, I couldn't help him, and the more he tried to get out of the muck, the harder he and the deeper he went into this muck. I'm like, how am I going to go home and tell your parents that you died in the muck because it was supposed to be a school? So as I'm running around looking for something to reach down, some kind of rope, something that could be in this desolate area, I go around the turn and there's a telephone pole completely across to the other side. So I walk across the telephone pole like Tarzan and I get to the side. Now I'm looking right at him down into the ravine. And he's looking, he goes, how did you get over there? And I said, there's a big log across. He goes, help me, help me. And he's sinking more. So luckily on that side, where I am now, there were big pieces of branch and whatnot. And I put it down and we were able to get him out. And let me tell you something. When you get stuck in low tide muck, he came out. It was like tar. It was horrible. And the smell was incredible on this guy. So because of where we were now, we were able to get to the back of this Adventures Inn amusement park, which was not open yet. They didn't have a fence in the back because it was all barren land. There was no reason to fence that. The front had a fence. So we sneak into the bathroom. And back then they had a trough. Basically five guys could line up and pee like if a horse would drink out of a trough, a big long trough. That's how you pee. You didn't have individual uh, toilets at that point. You had toilet bowls, but not places like a urinal. So Steve takes off his pants. I'm washing his socks and his shoes, his sneakers in the, in the trough on the other end. He's got his legs and his feet and he's washing his, he took off his shirt because the top of his shirt was, the bottom I should say, was still covered with this stuff. Steve's standing there naked in his underwear. <laughs> And a guy walks in, another guy with a tiny little hat. It must have been something at the time that people had to wear these tiny hats in the middle of the 70s or early 70s with a big cigar. A small guy's big cigar, you know what that means. Anyway, long story short, which I never do, he turns around, he said, what are you guys doing here? And we told him we, we got stuck in the mud. And he goes, well, you better get out of here and you better clean up because you can see the prints like in a horror movie, all the footprints from Steve walking in. It was everywhere. Well, needless to say, after we got Steve all cleaned up and, and he's running around with wet pants and everything else, we, we were able to sneak out of there. And did we clean up? No, we did not. So that's a story that I think I might have told you, Caitlin, but that's one for the records. So on that note, I will now celebrate 
and welcome you into podcast history, your 100th episode coming up. So hopefully my story reaches people and they say how stupid and how silly this guy is, but true stories. I got them all. I got a million of them. So here's to your 100th, um, I guess, anniversary of your podcast and to many, many more. And I still don't know what Tabata means. LOL. Love you guys. Enjoy.